The 49ers report today is made possible thanks to our friends at Magic Spoon. When you look at these flavors from Magic Spoon, how do you say, I don't want that cereal, especially considering it's healthy and it's delicious. You can go with the variety of pack, which I recommend because you can test out all of these flavors, but also fruity is great. Peanut butter is my personal favorite. Cocoa is delicious, especially when you roll it up into some peanut butter and put it in the freezer for 20 minutes. Hashtag munchy meal. Yeah, we gotcha. Cinnamon also will rock your taste buds. Frosted is good. So too is blueberry. And here's the deal. You can get $5 off your checkout by going to magicspoon.com slash 49ers report. That link for that discount is in the comment section and the description of this video. Let's kick off this mailbag with this question coming in from Dave in the Desert. Do you think Sherfield will get some game time, or will it be Ayuk and the Debo show? I think Trent Sherfield is going to get plenty of time because I think he's the third best wide receiver on this roster, and I think Kyle Shanahan has realized that. Trent Sherfield is a legitimate wide receiver. I expect him to be a massive component of this offense here in 2021. Next question coming in from Alpha Doctor 20. Who do you think will be the best rookie this season other than Trey Lance? Diamador Lenore and Talanoa Hufanga. I think both proved in the preseason that they're ready to play. I think both can contribute on special teams as well as in this defense. I think they're going to get defensive snaps, and I think they're going to be very impressive in their rookie campaigns. David Delgado, who are your starting receivers after Debo and Ayuk? If you go 10 personnel, which is four wide receivers, I think it'll be Debo, Ayuk, Sherfield, and Mohamed Sanu. If you only put out three wide receivers and you don't need a slot man, I think it's going to be Debo, Ayuk, and Sherfield. You can interchange uh, Mohamed Sanu in there as your slot, but consistently I think it's going to be those four guys. Who the hell knows uh, what happens with Jalen Hurd and his injury? As a big-bodied wide receiver and a red zone threat, maybe you plug him in and you play him if he can stay healthy. Michael Norris, thank you for using the hashtag 49ers. That's how you get your questions answered during our live mailbags. Do you think that Brandon Ayuk will have a breakout year after having a decent rookie season? I've said this a couple of times. I think Ayuk is a prime breakout candidate here this upcoming season. I think it's realistic for him to have 1,000 yards receiving, especially with that additional game. He was awesome last year as a rookie. I expect him to be just as good, if not better, in his sophomore campaign. Many Men 50. Is that a shout out to 50 Cent? Get Rich or Die Trying, one of the best rap albums of the last two decades. Those are just facts. What are your expectations for D Ford? D Ford has said that come week one, he expects to be playing on a pitch count. So he's not going to get a massive amount of snaps. If D Ford can give you five to eight sacks, though, that's a win for this entire organization, considering that he's coming off pretty serious neck and back injuries. My expectations for him to be on a pitch count for like the first month, and if he's able to prove that he can stay healthy, hopefully he can come through with five to eight sacks. Anything more than that, massive win. I'm saying five to eight sacks for D Ford. Do you think D Ford is gonna come through with more sacks? Let me know. How many sacks will D Ford have? Give me a number in the comment section. Epi Esparza. Are Ha Ha Clinton Dix and Josh Norman good veteran depth, although past their prime? So Ha Ha Clinton Dix isn't on the 53-man roster. He's not on the practice squad. So if they do bring him back because an injury happens in the secondary, I'll like it because I think Ha Ha Clinton Dix belongs on an NFL roster. As far as Josh Norman, you said it right there. He is good veteran depth even though he is past this prime. You're not going to expect him to play all too much, but when he's on the field, you expect him to not get burnt. Wet Noodle 187, what are your expectations for Kinlaw this year? He flashed as a rookie, wasn't good enough as a first-round pick. I think a big reason for that, those lingering knee issues that he had, you look at this defensive line depth chart, I think Javon Kinlaw could have a monster second season because it's another year in, he got that knee injury solved with some minor surgery this offseason, but also this defensive line, guys, is loaded. So the main focus isn't going to be on Javon Kinlaw. It's going to be on the likes of Nick Bosa and Eric Armstead, a D Ford, or all of the other depth pieces along this defensive line. So what noodle 187? I expect Kinlaw to be a force on the interior and live up to those expectations of him being that first-round pick back in 2020. 
gaming with Nate 25, do you think Jimmy Garoppolo will win or the Lions? I don't know what you mean by that question. Do I think the Niners are going to win against the Lions? Yes. My official prediction, 31-17. Do I think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to help the uh, Niners win? I do. Is he going to start? Yes. Alpha Doctor 20, do you think Hurd will stay on the 53 much longer? If he can't be active in week one, I don't see the point in having Jalen Hurd on the 53-man roster. Put him on Pup and then bring him back in like week seven when he's actually ready to play. So if Hurd can't play in week one, what is the point in him occupying a precious roster spot? I don't know, man. I'm frustrated by Hurd mostly because I want him to play because I see he has so much potential, but the guy just can't stay on the field consistently. Speaking of consistency, I consistently take down Magic Spoon as part of my diet. It is a morning routine for me that I don't ever want to lose. Why is that? Because per serving, you get zero grams of sugar with Magic Spoon cereal, four grams of net carbs, and 13 to 14 grams of protein. Let me ask you this. What other cereal brand out there is loaded with protein to the likes that Magic Spoon is? And here's the deal. They use quality protein. I mentioned deals. Here's our deal for you. Get $5 off your checkout by going to magicspoon.com slash 49ers report. You want to try all of these del delicious flavors. Cocoa, peanut butter, cinnamon, fruity, frosted. They are all guaranteed to rock your taste buds. And unlike all of the traditional brands out there, Magic Spoon actually uses healthy ingredients. I've really started to take my diet very, very seriously, especially after my mom passed away of cancer. I'm really kind of curious about what I put in my body because I want to make sure those ingredients are clean and actually good for me. That's why I've hopped on the Magic Spoon train. You can do so as well and get $5 off by going to magicspoon.com slash 49ers report. What a name here. Peter Piper. I see what you did. Round of applause. Well done. 49ers need a big wide out. Could they sign Alshon Jeffrey if Hurd cannot play? I think Alshon Jeffrey is washed. He hasn't had a 1,000-yard season since like 2016. He was awesome for the Eagles back in 2017 during that Super Bowl run, but he has consistently had to deal with injuries. So if injuries rip apart this Niners receiving core, maybe you bring in a veteran option. And the Niners right now, outside of Jalen Hurd, don't have like that classic big-bodied wide receiver who's a jump ball threat. Now, here's the thing. The Niners with receiving core, all of the guys on the roster, more than 200 pounds, but they don't have that really tall guy. Alshon Jeffrey is that. I just wouldn't really sign him. Wet Noodle 187, what do you think about the starters in the secondary going with their jersey numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4? I think the changing of the rule of allowing basically anybody to have whatever number they please is solid. I think when you have like defensive backs, wide receivers, and DBs rocking solo digits, it's kind of swaggy. So Wet Noodle 187, I kind of like it to answer your question. Michael Norris, how many touchdowns and picks for Jimmy G this year? I think if things go well, we could see a 4K passing yard season from Jimmy. If he stays healthy, <clears throat> Jimmy Garoppolo has proven he can be a very productive quarterback. 4,000 yards passing, I'm not sure about that. And it's not a slight on Jimmy G. It's because I know Kyle Shanahan wants to run the football a lot, establish the running game, and be a very physical offense. So 4,000 yards, a little bit lofty. I also think Trey Lance is going to be a part of this two-quarterback system. So hopefully Jimmy G has a big year. Sidney Johnson, you think Bosa is ready. I think he's going to play week one. Everything that I've seen, everything that I've heard indicates, it points, that Nick Bosa is going to be ready for week one against the Lions. Trent Williams said, look, this guy looks better than he did pre-injury. And coming off torn ACLs, guys have recovered very, very well. Kind of like how pitchers come off of Tommy John. I think that's going to be the same case for Nick Bosa. Go for broke. How will you feel if Jalen Hurd is cut, then the Seahawks pick him up and he breaks out as a star wide receiver? How do I feel about that? I think that could be a nightmare for everybody involved. Can you imagine 
if Jalen Hurd, who hasn't played in one regular season game since getting drafted in the third round back in 2019 because of health, somehow becomes healthy, is able to stay on the field, goes to probably the most heated rival in the Seattle Seahawks, and then breaks out as a star wide receiver. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. John Lynch, Kyle Shanahan probably wouldn't be able to either, nor will D'Amico Ryans because he has to scheme up against him. But I think at this point, Jalen Hurd is just an injury-prone player. 49ers versus Lions watch party. It's all going down right here on the channel on Sunday, 12.45 p.m. Eastern, 9.45 a.m. Pacific time. This is the first watch party that we're doing in the regular season. All of our three watch parties in the preseason were raging successes. We had thousands and thousands of people join us. So if you didn't join us, Join us now that the regular season is here. Hit that red subscribe button down below. Turn on those notifications. And if you want to drink with us, I'll be drinking beers on Sunday. Michael Norris, we all know Kittle will ball out. What other tight end is going to shine for us? I don't know if Ross Dwelly or Charlie Warner are going to shine. I would like to see more 12 personnel packages from Kyle Shanahan. That means two tight ends on the field at the same time. As long as George Kittle balls out, I'm cool with that. Those other guys, they can be used as blockers or red zone threats. Alpha Doctor 20, he is the alpha. Jimmy G for MVP. We've had a lot of this chatter over the last several weeks. Jimmy G will have to pass for like 4,000 yards and 35 touchdowns to three picks for him to be named MVP. That's really what's going to have to happen. Uh, because there are so many great players across the National Football League. I wouldn't bet on it, but if you want to, and he does win it, the payout will be very pretty. Another Super Chat coming in from Noah Pena, this time a $15 Super Chat. Chase, when the 49ers win the Super Bowl, I'm giving you one of my Rolex watches. Say less, I'll get it fitted for me. When and if the Niners win the Super Bowl, I expect that Rolex watch to be in the mail. Send it right here to Chat Sports. I'll rock it. Always down to show off the bling. My mom loves JG. A lot of people love Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, he's got dashing looks. Leading rusher after 18 weeks. I think Raheem Mostert is going to be the leading rusher for the Niners here in 2021. I think he's going to get the bulk of the carries. Breakout player on defense, Javon Kinlaw. I think Javon Kinlaw could have a massive, massive season on the defensive interior for this front that I think is going to be one of the best across the NFL. Uh, if that's the case and Javon Kinlaw does have a breakout season, that's a great situation for San Francisco. Other than that, I think DJ Jones could end up being like an underpaid guy who produces much better than his current salary. D'Amador Lenore, Talanoa Hufanga as rookies, I think they could contribute as well. How many sacks will the 49ers defensive line have on Sunday? Get those predictions in in the comment section because this Lions offensive line is bad and this Niners defensive line is fantastic. Go for broke. Who's starting at cornerback other than Verrett? Uh, Mosley, Norman, or Lenore? Uh, it's going to be like Kwan Williams, Emmanuel Mosley, and Jason Brett. Those are going to be your three starting cornerbacks. And then Jaquaski Tar and Jimmy Ward are going to be your starting safeties. I think Lenore could come in for depth. I think Norman could come in in depth. Uh, I don't know if Ambry Thomas is going to be active on game day. I, I really don't because I don't know if he's ready to play. Wet Noodle 187, who has the most INTs this year? I'm saying Kinlaw, LOL, JK. I'm saying Ward. Wet Noodle 187, he's got jokes. Ideally, it's Jason Verrett, who was awesome last year when he was finally able to stay healthy. When healthy, I think Jason Verrett, he's one of the better shutdown cornerbacks across the league. Uh, I don't think that's a hyperbolic statement, so give me Jason Verrett to lead the team in interceptions. Let's hope he stays healthy. Gaming with Nate 25, Faithful, where are y'all at? We're right here, man. On our live show right now, 224 people watching live. Our videos have been popping off on the 49ers report. You guys are the best. Not bang, bang, Niner gang. You ride with us. We appreciate you making the 49ers report a part of your day. And speaking of making the 49ers report a part of your day, join me for our watch party on Sunday. 
live play-by-play, -play, live scoreboard, live stats. We'll be bringing you live analysis, and I'll be taking your questions, drinking beers. It all starts 12.45 p.m. Eastern, 9.45 a.m. Pacific time. Subscribe and join us. Last question of this mail sack. Who do you think the Niners are going to put on DK Metcalf when we play the Sea Chickens? I think it's going to be a variety of guys. I'm actually interested to see what D'Amico Ryans does and how he approaches defending top-tier wide receivers. And if it's going to only be a Jason Verrett going up against a DK Metcalf and you put him on, uh, on an island or you want to interchange some of those cornerbacks to give Verrett a rest. Also, sometimes defensive coordinators don't like their cornerbacks to roam from the left side or to the right side, vice versa. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, but I expect Jason Verrett to mainly be locking up DK Metcalf because he is the number one cornerback.